Welcome to our Facebook Live. Uh, we are doing a Facebook Live car seat combustion demonstration today. We are not calling it a test, we are calling it a demonstration, and we will be very specific and tell you why that is. Um, what you are looking at right now uh, is our uh, testing components, if you will. And I want to introduce the folks who are with me today. Um, my photographer and uh, right hand, Scott, is behind the camera lens. Thank you, Scott. Uh, to Scott's right, we have Dr. Don Lucas, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. He is a combustion scientist, and he's been featured in several of our stories. Thank you, sir. Uh, and then behind me, we have Bob Monahan, who is the co-founder uh, of Up a Baby, and he stressed that I had to say co-founder, otherwise his wife would be upset. So, <laughs> thank nice you so much. You. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so, let's go back over to our test, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're doing here today. So the point of this demonstration is to, number one, um, demonstrate how the federal flammability standard works, why it requires flame retardants in car seats, um, why some fire scientists say that those retardants and the standard are irrelevant to fire safety in real world car fires, um, and then also how Up a Baby has managed to design a car seat without retardants that still passes this federal test. For years, decades, manufacturers, car seat manufacturers said they couldn't pass the test without retardants. We're going to talk about how this sample is different than um, others that are currently on the market. And then we're also going to talk about why manufacturers uh, or the Manufacturing Association, which represents Up a Baby and other car seat manufacturers, um, they say regulatory changes are still needed because what Up a Baby has done is not uh, necessarily um, the best solution for all car seat manufacturers. And we'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. Um, so, Don, I want to start with you and talk about why we're not going to call this a test. So, uh, we do have the federal um, flammability laboratory test procedure, and uh, here, Scott, I'll hold it up for you. Um, this is the actual requirements of the test from NHTSA. Uh, for those of you who have questions, just hang on to them in a second. We are going to take questions in a second, but I want to get through the background of this so you really understand. Um, uh, so, this is the official test. Um, now, we can't replicate it exactly because it requires specific temperature controls, 70 degrees, 50% humidity, uh, atmospheric pressure, 28 to 32 uh, inches of mercury. The sample would have had to have been held at this, uh, this temperature in climate control for a certain amount of time. It also requires a very specific hood that I have a picture of, the burn test cabinet. Um, the test has to be done in this. Aside from those components, though, Don, we're trying to replicate this as closely as possible to give a visual demonstration, right? So tell us about right. what we have here. So what, what it is is we're just trying to demonstrate the principles, the, the combustion science, essentially, that goes into doing one of these tests. So really all we've got is a small Bunsen flame here, an inch and a half. It's just natural gas from like you get at home. Which is the required size. The required Mine, size. It must be an inch and a half flame, and it's uh, .375. Uh, inches in diameter, which is what that is. Right. And, but the sample size is approximately the same. The holder's a little different. And we've got it outside in the laboratory, but underneath a hood, mainly to control the, any toxic gases that come off when these things start burning. Because one thing that we've learned is that even materials that have flame retardants in them can burn. They're not flame proof. So that you big, have a big enough fire, things will catch fire, like in the car interior. So if for instance, the fuel tank ruptures in an accident and you catch a fire, the interior components, and most of you have seen a car fire, will quickly burn, including car seats, and not just the normal car seats for adults, but for the baby car seats also. And you just said that the materials, even with flame retardants, can burn. Um, would you say they will burn? Yes, they will burn. So even with flame retardants, and my understanding is no matter how much flame retardant you put in a piece of fabric, it still will ignite. It, it depends on the size of flame that you do, how long. There's a lot of complications mm -hmm. of where you ignite it, whether you have the material vertical, whether it starts at the top, the bottom of the car seat, or wherever, you know. So there's a lot of different uh, variables that go into actually how a real fire starts and how it uh, burns, as opposed to a test where you're really trying to come up with a method that can be done reproducibly so you get the same results and, and it's very controlled. So it, it's a one way of doing testing, but it doesn't always reflect real world conditions. And you can make things flame proof, but you either would have to add extremely large amounts of flame retardants, chemical flame retardants. Which most manufacturers probably couldn't afford. Or you could use very exotic materials that wouldn't burn at all. 
and again, which most manufacturers could afford. Or they could, but then you couldn't afford to purchase them. Or um, wouldn't be comfortable. Or wouldn't be comfortable for a child car seat. So I do want to make a few um, very, very important notes right off the top before we ignite this sample. First of all, a child car seat is critical to safety in a car. Your child should never be in a vehicle outside of a, 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 a excuse me, should never be in a vehicle, yeah, outside of a car seat. Um, and also, we know that children, car seats protect it. They keep them from dying in car accidents. So please don't let any of this uh, imply to you that you should not use a car seat. Um, in fact, the most important thing is that you have a car seat that fits your child uh, and that you do change them from an infant car seat to a toddler car seat at the recommended weight. Um, that is very, very important. Uh, a car seat is required by law in all 50 states. It's the only consumer product that is required by law in all 50 states. So you as a parent or a caregiver must put your child in a car seat whenever in a vehicle. None of this should imply otherwise. Um, however, experts say, many experts, whether they be chemical researchers or green uh, scientists or fire, or many fire scientists as well, um, they note that outdated regulations may be exposing children to concerning chemicals in their car seats uh, for no apparent safety benefit. And that really is the key here is, say, is there a safety benefit? That's what we set out to to answer uh, in our recent investigation, if you're interested in seeing it, it's on all the Facebook pages that I believe this is streaming on right now, the Julie Watts TV page, the newslom.com page, and the CBS uh, San Francisco page. Uh, so car seat makers add these chemical flame retardants to the fabrics and the foams to satisfy federal flammability regulations. Child car seats were not common when this regulation was introduced uh, 45 years ago. They, they were introduced and became required about a decade later now, car seats must adhere to the same standard as the interior of the vehicle itself. Peer-reviewed studies now find the chemical flame retardants in the uh, car seats, also inside the children who are exposed to them. Now, the flame retardants are in lots of things. They're, they were in furniture, although they're now being phased out because of recent flammability revision for furniture. Um, but, you know, this is not the only place your child is going to encounter flame retardants. The issue is there are many parents who say, I want to reduce my child's exposure, and you legally can't at this point buy a car seat without these chemicals in it. Um, and no one from NHTSA to about a dozen other applicable agencies or industry groups could provide us with any evidence um, that there is a, a proven safety benefit for these chemicals in the car seat. So despite clear evidence of health concerns, a lack of data that there's any safety benefit, parents still can't buy car seats without them. Let me show you why they're there, and I'm going to have Don explain a little bit as well. So this is a standard sample of a car seat. So I'm going to show them this right here. Um, most car seats, almost all car seats on the market right now, they have fabric and they have foam. And they all have very similar foam to this. There are some fabrics that can pass the flammability standard. They're naturally flame resistant enough to pass the standard uh, without any added retardants. We know that the Ecology Center just did a study and they found that the, one of the Brightex car seats that was tested did not have any flame retardants in the fabric. Um, however, there are no car seats on the market right now that we are aware of um, that does not have added chemical flame retardants in the foam, with the exception of one other one. I'll talk about that in a second. They have flame retardants in the fabric. But uh, when you test this, and Don, you can explain this, when the, the current test requires that you individually ignite every single component. So you have to light the fabric by itself and the foam by itself, right? That's right. And, but I do want to say one thing about the test procedures. Yes. There are no test procedures or requirements that require you to add flame retardants. Right. They're all performance-based. So there's a certain standard that, the, in this case, will explain a little more how fast the flame propagates along the material. But what we found is that in car seat material and furniture, that the most, the easiest way to meet the flammability standards is to add flame retardants. And some of these are toxic, and some of them are potentially toxic. So the requirements are not to add the flame retardants, but you have to meet a performance standard. And the easiest and cheapest way is normally to add chemical flame retardants. Right. And the Juvenile Product Manufacturers Association and car seat manufacturers for years have been saying, we can't make an affordable car seat that you, that middle America, can afford um, without adding flame retardants. Otherwise, the materials would cost too much, and we'd have to charge $500 for, I'm making that up. I don't know the exact <laughs> number. But um, you know, we'd have to charge a lot of money for these car seats and most Americans wouldn't be able to afford them. So the question is, if manufacturers for decades have been saying it can't be done without retardants, now Up a Baby says they have created a, um, a, a car seat without retardants. How are they passing the standard? And it has passed the standard. We've confirmed mm -hmm. you sent it off to the laboratory, and it's passed, and it's a standard. Yes. Yeah. So um, would you like to explain, or would you like me to explain? <laughs> Go ahead. 
Okay. Um, so as you can see with this car seat sample, whereas in this car seat, the fabric and the foam are separate, so each has to be individually ignited. In this sample, they are laminated together. This is now one component. So when tested, this is lit at the same time. Now the test requires that you ignite the side of the fabric that is outward facing, that faces the interior of the vehicle. So when they perform the test, they will be igniting this. Um, what we're told is uh, organic wool. Organic wool is known to be naturally flame resistant, especially um, those that have certain weavings. The tighter the weave, the more flame resistant it can be, things of that nature. Uh, so when they ignite the, the wool, it actually passes the standard. They are not igniting the foam directly. That is how they're able to do it. I will note there was another car seat that was recently tested in the Ecology Center study um, that also, they, they did not find flame retardants in the foam itself. We questioned the manufacturer and they said, uh, they also have a laminated foam fabric like this. However, in order to pass the standard, they added the flame retardants to the fabric, not the foam. In this case, there are no flame retardants in either component, um, but you are charging a bit of a premium for this, right? How much is the new car seat going to cost? This is uh, $349 retail. And okay. our standard seat's $299. So a little bit more expensive, mm -hmm. about $50 more expensive than your standard yep. seat. Um, but certainly it is more expensive than many of the, you know, mainstream car seats out there. Not everyone can afford a $300, $350 car seat. So let's get to the standard and talk about the standard. And we are going to demonstrate. Now, again, this is not an official test. We do not have the proper uh, environmental components or the proper hood for a test. So we are not putting it to the test. This fabric has already passed the NHTSA standard. I want to make that very clear. And the standard doesn't require that the fire go out. Um, I'll let you explain. What, what does the standard require? So the, the standard is set up so that you apply the flame to one end of this apparatus and the, the uh, materials in between. You hold the flame there for 15 seconds at a specified distance, take the flame away, and then you watch how the flame propagates along the material. And once the, we won't go into the technical details, but essentially the flame cannot move more than four inches in one minute once the sample has been lit. And so that, that's what the pass-fail criteria is. And, so, and again, because we're not exactly in the right conditions, you won't necessarily get the same results if you were doing a certified test. But it'll just give you some idea of what does happen to these materials when you apply a flame to it. And you, the one thing to note is that these materials will burn. Again, adding flame retardants or even passing the test doesn't mean it's going to be flame proof. And that's one thing you always want to be careful about with any materials. They're flammable. You want to be, take care of because we don't want to have fire deaths. You've got to take care of the ignition sources and be safe. It's very important. And so just to kind of point out, I, again, I have the flammability standard in my hand. Um, so just to point out, we have a Bunsen burner that is the right width and flame height as it would be used in the official test. Um, the specimen is 4 inches by 14 inches, and that's the required test size for the official test. Um, it is face down, so the, the uh, portion of the material that will be out, outer facing, uh, touching the child or the out, you know, in the interior of the vehicle is what will be exposed to the flame. Uh, and then what, we, what, what the normal test would watch is you would ignite it, you would wait for it to move an inch and a half in, and then you start timing, and you time how long it takes to move another inch and a half, and then there's a calculation burn rate that they use to decide does it pass the test. But the ultimate is uh, it cannot move uh, more than four inches in one minute. Is that correct? Right. Right. You went into a lot more detail than I would. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, one other thing I want to know and why I'm really glad we have Don here, this is a really complicated topic in case you hadn't noticed. And so when we've been reporting on this over the last year, um, it's my job to break it down and make it simple for the TV audience, somebody who doesn't have a technical background. But changing one word can change the meaning of something and can make it inaccurate. So before we uh, ever put anything on the air, I have sent scripts or portions of scripts to scientists, to federal regulators, uh, various people to vet my language to make sure that what I'm saying is absolutely accurate. Right now we're live. Um, so I want to make that disclaimer. I may misspeak or say something that changes the technical or scientific context of something, and I'm hoping that Don will correct me. Uh, I'll I'm do my best. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. I just interview them on TV. So let's go ahead, Don. I'm, let me have you ignite the fabric. Okay. And while you do that, you can tell us about what's going on. All right. So let's put the flame under there. The idea is to wait for 15 seconds. As you can see, you are going to get a flame occurring. But you can see it's not propagating down very quickly. And now, let me be clear. I'm going to quote from the, the actual standard. You know, one of the things is uh, certainly we don't want our child um, to ever 
be injured in a car fire. And if this standard could save just one child, then I think many folks say, well, then it's worth it, right? But I want to be very clear. At the very top of the standard, it says um, that FVMS S number 302 uh, it specifies a burn rate, uh, burn resistant requirements for materials used in the occupant, occupant compartments of motor vehicles. Obviously, the car seat goes inside the motor vehicle, so it is included. The purpose of this standard is to reduce deaths and injuries, quote, especially those originating in the interior of the vehicle from sources such as matches or cigarettes. That is crucial when you think about the fire safety benefit um, and why this was initially introduced. Now, none of us were there when they introduce this. But the standard itself says, especially originating from sources like matches or cigarettes. Now at the time, uh, what was it, 45 years ago, I think it was 1972 off the top of my head, certainly cigarettes were very common in cars. And lighters and matches were very common in cars. And this is something that you would um, certainly want to protect your child from. And at the time though, car seats weren't really common. Uh, 10 years later, car seats were introduced. But uh, it makes sense that they would have a standard like this. Today, many critics argue that your five-year-old in a car seat is probably not smoking or playing with matches or a lighter. They don't have access to, generally speaking, um, this size flame. And fire scientists, I'm going to let you add to this a little bit, Dom, but fire scientists um, like Vito Gabrowskis, who, who was formerly the head of uh, fire research uh, for furniture at NIST, uh, which is a, a fed, what is this, the National Institute of Standard and Technology. And they basically research what? Tell they, us what it is. They, do, they have a fire group that studies how flames and fires occur, how to prevent them, and coming up with standards. And, and Vito would do research on different materials to see how you could prevent fires or uh, reduce the flammability. I do want to point out that this is fairly typical of the kind of materials that are used in car seats and furniture, especially the foam. Because what you see is dripping of the material, and that's usually the polyurethane foam that's melting and dripping. So this is very similar is to other tests or tests or demonstrations that we've done. And I also wanted to point out is that during the time we've been speaking, I'm not exactly sure how long it's been, but it's more than a couple minutes, the flame has not propagated more than four inches in the one minute that is the requirement. So that's fairly typical of a kind of a test. And exactly what we saw with the other samples that if, if you watch the story, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but it's, I believe it's posted um, below this live feed on all of the timelines that you're watching on the Julie Watts TV page, on the newsbond.com page, and on CBS's page. Uh, we have about a nine minute summary of our investigation, our year long investigation. And you can see when we actually ignited car seats with flame retardants, they performed very similarly. Um, there tends to be a lot of smoke, a lot of black smoke, when you light, ignite a, a sample that, with flame retardants in it. Um, and then we saw a lot of this dripping foam as well. Um, that's the foam. That's, that's a, um, a byproduct of the foam. So um, one of the things to note uh, here is, again, that the, the size of the flame is what they're focusing on. And so fire scientists like Vito Bobrovskis, and I want you to comment on this a little bit, Don, um, they'll say, listen, real world car fire flames are much bigger than an inch and a half. And so while these flame retardants do help to um, slow the spread of a small flame, a cigarette or lighter flame, if it's a real car fire where the gas is ignited, where the car uh, has ignited and now these flames are being fueled by the combustible materials, by the time those flames reach the child inside the car seat, or more importantly, the fabric underneath the child inside the car seat, it's likely too late and uh, flame retardants, or even the standard, um, is really irrelevant to protecting that child. So if you can give us, I want to make sure that what I just said was totally accurate, if you could give us um, kind of your insights on that. Well, the, the one thing that I think it's important to note is that the material, the foam underneath the fabric doesn't ignite first. It's always the fabric that ignites and then it gets to the foam. So testing the foam by itself is not necessarily the best way of, of testing for fire resistance because if the fabric catches fire, you're gonna, you could see that the flame could be bigger than your test flame. The other thing to note is that th this is one size of the flame and you've got a variety of flame ignition sources in a car. You might even use something as small as a match. And so they, those are typically, or a cigarette, you would have a smoldering fire rather than an open flame. And so those properties and the conditions which those would lead to a large fire are different. So you could protect against a flame this size, but if you make this flame much bigger, and as you can imagine in a car fire, there's a lot of combustible materials in the inside the vehicle compartment and outside, 
And if the fuel source is there and the flame is larger, this will burn very quickly. So um, tell us a little bit about the furniture flammability standard. So the furniture flammability standard, um, which was introduced right around the same time as this standard, actually, uh, required a similar test in that the foam inside your couch, per se, say, um, needed to, to pass an open flame test like this, and they couldn't get the foam to pass the test without adding flame retardants. So, <coughs> excuse me, so for years your furniture has been filled with flame retardants. They recently, California recently revised TB 117 2013, which now no longer requires an open flame test. It requires a smolder test, meaning what you just said, the outer fabric, the fabric covering the inside of that furniture is what is tested, and now by a smoldering cigarette, I believe, as opposed to an open flame. It's, it's a smoldering ignition source, right? Uh, and it actually, because of that, we found that the amount of flame retardants in furniture that's sold in California and throughout the country has dropped dramatically. So most of the manufacturers, because they're now allowed to produce furniture without flame retardants in the foam, have removed that, mainly because they want to reduce the amount of toxic chemicals in the environment. And a lot of consumers have been asking for these materials without flame retardants. So a couple of disclaimers. Um, the chemical industry. Uh, the American Chemistry Council will tell you that, and they have said to us on several occasions, that flame retardants help save lives. They provide um, valuable time to escape a fire. Uh, and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, which uh, is the one who's responsible for this standard, uh, told us that they believe the standard has served to save many children um, in car fires. Now, they didn't specify the standard as it's applied to car seats to save children, but they specified the standard in general, um, which I think Fire scientists would say that's probably true if you have the standard on many of the components in the car. Uh, you certainly want those to be flame resistant and withstand a four inch flame. Um, the argument though for, for many parents um, and for many basically consumer advocates uh, is that parents should have the right, the opportunity to purchase a car seat without these chemicals in it. And right now the manufacturers say they can't make an affordable car seat to do that without these chemicals based on the current standard. Uh, we showed you how Up a Baby did it. But we should note that Up a Baby has one car seat. It's, it's mm -hmm. This car seat here is the Up a Baby Mesa Henry that is set to be released in the spring? Yeah, in around uh, April 1st. Okay. And uh, so one color, one car seat, only available for infants. So once your child is six months old, <laughs> they're going to have to have play returns again. Um, but explain to us why. Um, you know, manufacturers have been saying for years that, that this couldn't be done. You've done it, but you've done it very, you know, with just this one model. The most common question that I've received so far is, mm -hmm. when am I going to see it for a toddler seat? Oh, yeah. Um, but explain why it's so difficult and why it's taken so long to create this. Um, quite frankly, like, we became aware of this through our customer service group. We sit right near them and we became aware this is such a hot button and they were asking us, why can't we do this? Why are these chemicals in there? And, and, and that type of thing. So believing this to be very difficult, I challenged our R&D group to come up with a great solution. And they, I mean, quite frankly, worked on it about a year, and by searching various materials, we found a way to do it. Um, I'm not sure if other companies tried this solution, and maybe we just were got lucky and picked the right material, but using merino wool worked. It solved the problem. It passed the test. And it's also a wicking fabric, so the child stays, it's not just for warmth, but the ch child stays cool. And uh, as it's a merino wool, it's used in the finest apparel. It looks good, too. So we're really... Uh, we put our we put the effort out. We took a risk, and it's working nicely for us. So, what would you say to someone who says, "Well, obviously the flammability standard is fine," um, because clearly you have come up with a way to meet the standard um, and still not have flame returns in your product? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think even you would probably admit that this is not a car seat that's going to be a viable option for every child in America. Um, price point, if nothing else. And not, not to mention that it's only for infants. <laughs> yeah, it's an infant car seat. It's uh, depending on the child. It can last up to 12 months. I mean, the bigger kids might get through it quicker. Um, it is a similar price point to other infant car seats that don't have the fire retardants, retardants that don't, or that do have flame retardants. So, so like it's it's not like this is a, to us. It's not outrageously expensive. It is in the in the more I don't know. I guess the higher price point of of the car seats. But if you look stack up all the features this has on it, besides the uh, besides the wool and the natural fire retardant, there's a lot of features that make this so easy to install and reliable to install that it's safer, so right. you put a, what price do you put on that? So, so yeah. um, now I, I want to make it clear that this is not a commercial for the baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that there are, I think what you're comparing it to is other um, green uh, car seats out there. So the, the, the car seats that tend to test um, 
lower. You're saying no. I've got people in the background saying no, that's not true. <laughs> um, the car seats that tend to test higher on the uh, ecology center type studies where they're, they're analyzing the flame retardants that are used and they're using um, what are believed to be safer types of flame retardants tend to cost a little bit more. In fact, all the top ranking car seats on the Ecology Center studies this year, I think, were above the $250 to $350 range. Mm -hmm. So certainly this, this model is in that range, but there are many Americans out there, obviously, who can't afford $250 for a car seat, and they need a you know, $50, $100 car seat. And so some of the, the larger um, mainstream manufacturers that don't cater to a higher-end mm -hmm. demographic are saying, we couldn't do this. We could not manufacture this with these materials. Um, to create a, a car seat that the masses could afford. Do you ever see a, a scenario in which you could create a car seat like this um, that, that you could charge $50 for, $100 for? I mean, potentially. I mean, there, it does cost more. Mm -hmm. It may when more people are using the fabric and there's economies of scale and you're not the first ones to come down the pipe with it. There's that potential. And that's usually how things work. They come in at the higher price points and, and they eventually work their way down to the moderate or the lower price points in, in many technologies, including cars. So. Well, I think a lot yeah. of people out there are hopeful that that will be the case. Um, I know that the Juvenile Product Manufacturers Association um, has a different point of view. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it, certainly I think a lot of people out there are, um, are hoping for that. So um, I want to open it up to questions if anyone does have any questions. And I want to talk a little bit more um, I, you know, if we could uh, ignite one more piece and we can just show them one more um, sample <laughs> of how the, the standard works. For those folks who are just tuning in, um, I do want to repeat our, you know, the most important disclaimer. You can watch as Vito here sets up the next sample. Don. I don't, I'm sorry, Don? <laughs> it's all right. We were just talking Vito, about Vito. Vito's previously. a good friend. So. There is, uh, that's the beauty of, of live uh, Facebook, folks. <laughs> we usually say live TV of live Facebook. Um, okay, so first of all, car seats are crucial to keep children safe in the car. None of this should be interpreted to imply anything else. Always put your child in a car seat that is the proper size for their age, for their weight, for their height, um, and make sure it's a car seat that is properly installed uh, and that it's easy to install so that you do it properly every time. Um, now, what we are doing here is showing you not the actual test. This is an informal demonstration because the actual test requires that the room be at a certain temperature, humidity, and atmospheric pressure, that the sample be stored in a certain uh, climate control overnight, and that there be a specific hood um, that is being burned in. And, and these are not the components of that. What we have here, though, is the proper size flame, um, a similar U-shaped stand that is holding the sample. And again, the, even with flame retardants, um, the standard does not require that the flame goes out. The standard simply requires that it doesn't travel more than four inches in a minute. Um, and so how they do that is they wait for it to burn an inch and a half. Because well, you see right when you ignite it, it obviously flames uh, pretty impressively. But then the flame will start to, to taper off. Um, and they wait for it to burn an inch and a half. Uh, and then they start timing it to see how far it burns another inch and a half. And then there's a calculation that allows them to find out um, how far it burns in four minutes, uh, excuse me, in one minute. It can't burn more than four inches in one minute. Now, this sample and this car seat has already passed the federal test, so we are not performing the test here. What we are doing, though, is using the sample to demonstrate um, how this test works so that you can see uh, how it works and why folks are, why some folks have concerns about its relevancy to a real-world car fire because, as the standard states, it was initially intended to primarily protect from uh, cigarettes and flames the size of matches and lighters. Real world car fires fueled by combustible materials obviously are much larger. Uh, and so many fire scientists and many advocates, consumer advocates, uh, argue that uh, the standard in its current form is irrelevant because it's not the uh, materials on the inside but the materials on the outside that ignite first. As you can see in this case, it's self-extinguished. That's not a requirement. Um, it doesn't have to do that to pass the test. So this obviously is a great sample. Um, uh, are a great example. But, it, but it's an interesting point because this is from the same cover but from different parts of it and I'm not exactly sure whether it was thicker at one end or a little less so there could be slight variations and a little bit of change in the uh, turbulence around it so it shows you how complicated fires are and that it's it's not a simple thing to do and that's one of the reasons why the the test procedures are designed to try to be as reproducible as possible but it's hard to make them appear like a real fire because there's all these variables involved. Um, and I am not sure if we are still streaming. I think we might have lost our signal, actually. Um, but I am going to, oh no, we are still live. I think my phone just died. 
Um, okay, so I want to show you one more time the difference between this sample. As you can see, the fabric is actually laminated to the foam. That's how Up a Baby was able to get around the, um, the flammability standard. Uh, what you see here is a normal car seat. Most car seats, with the exception of one other that I'm aware of, um, have separate materials. The fabric and the foam are two separate things. While some fabrics can pass the standard without added flame retardants, they can be flame resistant. We know that Brightex has one model recently tested that found no flame retardants in the fabric. They, if they do, they must add uh, flame retardants to the foam, which is highly flammable. Again, they don't have to add the flame retardants. True. They have to pass the test. And the most common way, and usually the cheapest way, is to add chemical flame retardants. So let me let me uh, <laughs> take that back and say, car seat manufacturers tell us in order to make an affordable car seat, they must add flame retardants to the foam uh, in order to pass the test. One other manufacturer has flame retardant fabric, but none in the foam, and they've done the same thing, laminating it, and you light the flame retardant fabric instead. Um, so I'm hoping that this is a good example of, um, of how this test works, uh, why flame retardants are required, how UPA managed to get around the requirement. So again, the biggest question everybody keeps asking is, when are they going to see a toddler seat? And I know oh, you're trying to yeah, avoid yeah. the, the question. You're selling my wife, yeah, yes. Know, right? <laughs> no, we're working very hard on, a, on to grow the, grow the business, grow the brand, and and the next logical step for us would be to, to move on uh, uh, from our infant car seat. So uh, we're always working on new products. I can't tell you when something's going to launch, but we are working to grow our car seat lineup. Do you think that UPA doing this will trigger other car seat manufacturers to try to do the same thing? Um, I would think so, yeah. I, it works for us, and it seems to be, you know, like I said, it's, it's not really proprietary. It's, it's just a way of doing it that I think that, I guess, will, will, will be common common in the industry. And you know, one thing that's really interesting to note, uh, if you watch our stories, our investigation, uh, last time we did this combustion test with Don, we ignited the interior wool from a, a, an aftermarket car seat that somebody had purchased on Etsy. It had organic wool in the interior and cotton on the outside. Mm -hmm. When we lighted that wool interior by itself, it went up in flames. It flamed, it would not have passed the standard. There are different types of wool. Uh, and so you were saying that likely in this case, it's, the, it's not only the type of wool, but the weave that makes it flame resistant and not pass the standard. Yes, I mean, the weave makes a difference. We've had some materials that pass and don't pass. If it's like a brush surface, it has like loose fabrics and that's more likely to burn. So a tight weave and the right amount of oil in the, uh, in the, in wool, the wool, you know, <laughs> less oil the better then that will help you pass too. Right, and yeah. oil naturally from sheep, obviously, yeah. there's going to be some natural oil. Um, and so you went through a lot of different fabrics, tested a lot of different things before you got to this. It took us a little while, yeah. You've been working on this for how long? And tell us one more time this got sparked because customers were demanding it. It's been about a year, which, which is actually fast for us, but uh, yes. Yeah. I think a lot of people yeah. in the uh, manufacturing industry would definitely say it's fast. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any other questions. I'm not seeing a lot of other questions on Facebook. Other than Marissa saying, so what car seats are the worst for this? Um, Melissa, legally, I'm not going to answer that question. But I want to say thank you very much for asking the question. Um, okay, so thank you all so thank much you. for being here. Uh, I hope that we gave you a good demonstration. And we will be back again on Facebook Live again tonight at 7 p.m. where we will be uh, chatting live with you, asking folks questions. So if you do have questions, go ahead and post them in the comment section here. Um, and, you know, I'm actually looking at this, I believe, on... Um, CBS's page. So I don't know if you did post the questions on one of the other pages, on the Julie Watts TV page um, or the newsbomb.com page. If they are there, I will compile those questions and we will ask those questions to you live tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll end with a shot of the flame, Scott. <laughs>